Far away, Ray. The only question where it says State Ambassador Patrick Devine and Admiralty, this is the identification we have to make for ourselves, or is this the identification that is made for us as a free private estate owner? No, we make that identification. And that's that's the only uh, page I have not converted to doc form yet because I'm not that adept as, as uh, at, at uh, word processing as he is. And I need to find those images that he has on there. He, I, I have seen them, and uh, it was maybe about six or seven chapters behind when we were talking about the green folder. Ah. That's where they're at. Okay. If you okay. Want, you remember, I'm sorry, I'm not. I can't be that quite specific. Remember, in my madness, there's no logical place for storing stuff. Well, right, but the word green is all I needed. Okay. So now I I can go uh, search through all his directories for any files that have the word green in them. It was, and it's supposed to be with a green green file and folder, I, wow. and uh, maybe the look three fold to three folders backwards and three folders forward. That's in that area. It was last year that we were talking about this. Around. Yep. Um, around October. Of, around October twentieth. That was yes. cover pages for. Um, that was uh, cover pages for one of the courts. That was uh, a, a certain kind of court. Yeah, that was a green cover page for the Supreme Court, uh, and that was in uh, 9/11, 2012. That's in the U.S. of A bank folder. Yeah, the U.S. of A bank folder has a lot of green cover sheet stuff. Okay. So that's that's almost thirty folders back. I apologize. I didn't tell, couldn't tell you exactly where it was. Well, it doesn't make any damn difference. I mean, all I have to do is to, you know I, I do a directory dir slash s on asterisk green asterisk, and it gives me everything with a green in it. Okay. You know, stupid DOS command. I'm going to mute myself out, and I'm going to raise the volume so I can hear everybody in the background. Okay, okay. Now, uh, you guys have to, uh, the, the, the doc files that I did, you need to always check them very closely against the PDF because uh, errors still do crop up. I catch a lot of errors because I, I have to uh, rescan his faxes, and so all kinds of errors creep up. And I'm, I just found a few small ones in the definition file. Uh, well, one of the things you will notice is that on the B10 form in his PDF version, uh, he has a PDF version. Let's see what that file is called. Okay, that, that's in in the his B10 is in the bank, a B10 bankruptcy liquidation package PDF. It's about the third or fourth page in there. Mine is the B10 liquidation bankruptcy liquidation dash B10 form, just itself, all there. And uh, I I put that into a, a fillable PDF form. And the difference is, is that he he was able to use smaller type when he prepared it. Uh, mine was uh, uh, my type was a bit bigger, which actually makes it easier to read. And so that means I had to put some of the things that he had in there by typing text just to the side. And, you, and you'll notice that that uh, most of the time that text that I had to the side it should work out work out well. There was no room. Uh, in in that that fillable form to put the trustee and the attorney's address like he has them. So all I said in there was see attachment, and then I made an attachment which I called the B10 bankruptcy liquidation notice. 
because the attachment is the people who we have to send the notices or the people who the clerk has to send the notices to. So you need to ch check the, the differences between his B-10 form and the B-10 form I provided, because uh, there's two B-10s and PDF forms, but one that says package, the other one says B-10 form. The, the later documents are the ones I did. Okay, so, so, so to check those two, there's not that, there's not that much difference. And I'm, I'm going to go over it with him when he comes. So the I, ID is the only thing I don't have out there in, in word processing form right now. The ID you can make up yourself. Yeah, yeah. I need to find the images. Huh? I need to find the images so that they look good, because they don't come through on the packs. But I'll, I, I figured yeah, you had them before, okay? Yeah. And so, uh, Gray, Gray just pointed out that they were in in the folder where you were doing a lot of green cover sheets, and that's yeah. way back in the U.S. of A. Bank folder. We just Googled and uh, I just did a directory search and found that. So that's about uh, uh, you don't have to, You don't have to use those, okay? You can make up right. your own thing. Be creative. Sure. God damn it, people. You guys were given the power to create by God, by the creator of the universe, okay? The almighty power that you have. You are a creator unto yourself. So start creating some of this shit. Well, I like the imagery you use, though. Well, you could put Tony Matagger on there. I like Tony Matagger. Shit. Okay. Come on, people. Whatever you okay. want. Right. Well, I left it for last. Even if I had the images, I had, didn't have time to, to, to do it the way I wanted, and I concentrated on getting the other documents that have to be submitted. All you in. need to do is just say what you need to say on the damn thing and let it be a fact. Okay? Okay. You can always play around with something later. Sure. Mr. Patrick. Like I've tried to tell you, like I've tried to tell you people, there is nothing perfect in this damn world. There is flaws in everything. So you don't have to try and be perfect right out of the damn shoot because you're not going to be perfect. Mr. Patrick, I apologize for interrupting. This is Ray. I just yeah. wanted to thank you for everything you've done for me. With all due respect, well, thank you. And the thing is, we just got to keep pressure on these guys. We know we're at the right door, okay? And okay. see, if they deny this, okay, mm -hmm. then they are in violation of the 13th Amendment. Hmm. See, you guys don't even know what the 13th Amendment says, do you? Yes. Yeah, we do. No involuntary servitude or slavery. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place okay. subject to enforce jurisdiction. Okay, because the the slavery. This is well documented in numerous movies out there. Even in the Pirates of the Caribbean, the crew that Jack Sparrow had that was taken over by the Black Pearl, they were thrown in the brig on the Black Pearl. Now, who released them? 
the girl, and she was standing in Admiralty. Okay, you got me in that one. That movie had a whole bunch of different scenarios right out of the Bible in it. And it even fits everything today that's going on. Our persons, our corporate soul persons, are being held in bondage, in slavery, in servitude for the maritime system. Just like our cargo vessel, it's still out at sea. That's why we have to do the bank rupsy, because you have to run it upon the bank and rupture the bottom of the vessel so that it can't go back out to sea. Bank so you're, rupsy? You're, break, you're breaking your vessel. Yes, you're basically running it to the ground so that it cannot go back out to sea. Or well said, scuttle in your ship. Yes, but you have to do it through bankruptcy. And then, basically, when you remove the cargo, you also have to free all of the slaves or involuntary servitudes, your corporate persons. Okay, this is where I apologize. Not my place to talk. You set them free forevermore. Just like in the movie Wizard of Oz. So you, that's where you The release. land of Oz shall forever be free forevermore. That's where we release the copyright back to them, right? No, we're not releasing nothing back to them. Okay. We are getting our persons off their vessel. They can have their stinking vessel because they can't go back out to sea anymore. Okay. It's a piece of shit. Perfect. Yeah, we'll call in the the Indians to come over and scrap the damn thing. Mm. Mm. That's what they did with a bunch of vessels that basically got beached over in Saudi Arabia in that area. They call in the Indians, and they come in with their little ball-peen hammers and basically dismantle the damn ship. Yep. The key thing here is you have to become a free state, an no, e-state, an, inter- an enterprise state, a United States free enterprise state, private enterprise state. And you were supposed to do that when you turned 25. That's when you became the representative of that state. That is also known as a principality of North America, the continental North America. That's why we had the Good Witch of the North in the Wizard of Oz, because we are a principality in the North American continent. We are the prince, Mm -hmm. okay, because that's what America stands for the land of princes and princesses. Admiralty is for a prince. It's the law of princes. Since we have no king and queen in this country. That's why when we stand in court in Admiralty and they try and say, well, admiralty is the same thing as maritime. It's not. It's two different jurisdictions. Admiralty is for the living. Maritime is for the fictionally dead.
Most people don't even know how to read the Constitution, which there's only about eight, ten pages to that thing. Let alone read and understand the Bible. I knew that there was something definitely wrong in the Constitution, especially when it came to senators and representatives. It states right in there that they cannot run again for the office if they are an inhabitant of the state. That means they can only hold that office one term, sit one term out, then they can run for re-election. They can't be in there for 30-some-odd years sitting in that same office because that is a violation right there. That is a, that is a breach of covenant. But nobody has called the, the senators or anything on this. But it, but it is in the Constitution. It says right there. Okay? And I think I posted that up to Tom in the Word document that I sent him up there. About the taxes. The second page there. Right. No person shall be a representative who shall not have obtained the age of 25 and been seven years a citizen of the United States. And who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. That's not saying a resident, that's saying inhabitant. And there's a big difference between being an inhabitant and a resident. An inhabitant basically is a dweller or a household holder. So he's holding an office in the household of the state government system. He can't run again. So all these laws that everybody's passed, even that, uh, and I'll bet you'd find out that the people that voted for that uh, Federal Reserve, they were not roughly in office. Because they were probably sitting in there more than one or two consecutive terms in a row. You go back into the early history of the country, and basically it was, you said, you were just a, you go in there to the office and sit there one term, then you'd go home. If you wanted to try and rectify something like Davy Crockett tried to, he had to sit out one term, then he could run again and try and correct the mistakes that he made the first time. Read some of the history about this country. You might learn something. But everybody thinks they know the Constitution and everything, and they don't. <coughs> you can file a complaint in with the Supreme Court on this. Mm. That basically the senators and the representatives that are sitting in there in more than one office or more than one term, they are not only breaching a covenant, but they're also stealing from the people. They're working for the bankers. 
They're getting paid for something that they are not entitled to. And that's criminal charge. That means jail time for that. Now, if these U.S. trustees and U.S. Uh, attorneys, when we send this into the bankruptcy court, do not process this, then they're in violation of the 13th Amendment. They're also in violation of the Expatriation Act, and they're also committing fraudulent concealment. And it addresses bankruptcy in that fraudulent concealment as a criminal offense against the Bankruptcy Act. They try and play it up that basically it's for the, the people are hiding things from the custodian or the trustees. But when the trustees are hiding it from the creditors, that is also fraudulent concealment. Hmm. I've got one girl that's going in and she submitted her B10 in to come out of the whole thing she's also taking it in tomorrow into the state court she's on parole She's going to submit that into the court case that basically had her put in jail there and also against the parole, which is also addressed for that same court case, taking that court case now into admiralty. Therefore, all those charges have to be dismissed. I've got another guy that's basically going to do the B-10 and file it in to his federal court case, along with submitting it into the bankruptcy case. When he comes in in admiralty and mm-hmm. submits this B-10 in, it will shut down that federal court case because the federal court case is not against him. It's against the damn bankrupt. Mm. The fiction. It, because it's in maritime law, and that's the only one that they can charge. They can't charge the creator, the prince of the land. The only way that they get around trying to charge the prince of the land is by the people not supporting their children, their bastardly children, which is a fictional creation anyway. So all these people that are going to jail, are they're going in on basically not payment for child support. That's what they're throwing you in jail for, non-payment of child support. A woman that goes into court has to basically stand by the book of Ruth. She's not the father. The father is always the one that is the liable party to pay for the bastard child. In a woman's case, she is the female side, and the district attorney is the male factor in the court case. He is the father, or she, prosecuting attorney, is the father. They're the ones that have to make the payment. And that's out of the book of Ruth. But you also stand in admiralty in the place because you're coming in as the princess.
This thing is so damn simple when you really boil it down. And like I said before, sometimes you just need to stand in front of the mirror and talk yourself through this thing. Mm -hmm. So at least you sort of get a half-assed two-way conversation. Heard one guy that basically, and basically I heard that uh, old Mr. Roddy uh, C. there out in South Carolina or North Carolina, wherever he's at, well, he's now uh, sort of given up and turned it over. He's hired an attorney and basically going to uh, uh, let it go at that. So I don't know what he's all. This is Rob Class. Yes. Hmm. He has a hearing tomorrow. Yeah, but he's got an attorney. He ha- he hired an attorney. Wow. Yeah. See, he won't. Li- these people won't listen to what the hell I have to say. Right. I've told people to get in touch with him that they knew. Get him to contact me. I we are you. stifling. We have stifled. In my tr- case. For over two years, I have not paid traffic tickets. <coughs> that damn county attorney knows damn well that basically I can turn around and probably take him into a court action. Got another guy down in Texas. He's got him stifled because of what I've been telling him to put into the court, to the county attorney and stuff like that. And they ain't going to touch him. We have them. You just don't see it in all cases. Because they're not going to respond when we're right. Because they don't want the word out. They don't want to admit the treason straight up. Well, that too but they don't want to admit that we're right. Well, that's how because they Because if the they admitted that we were right, and see, now I've got two cases, one at the state and one at the federal level. If these two guys basically shut those two cases down, I've got two wins in my back pocket to tell everybody out here, hey, this damn shit works. Should have had a lot more by now, but basically people didn't hear what I was having to say and didn't try to go along with it. They were sitting on the fence waiting for a few of us to go out and do all the dirty work for them. Now, I must, I, I appreciate the ones that came to my beck and call when I put the call out that I needed some support. I will be getting something back to you in return for what you did. And I thank you very much. At least there are a few people that have faith and belief in what I'm doing. I guess if we did it, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> we are. And we're on target. It's about time that some people start spreading this word out there. Get on some of these talk shows and say, hey, you better listen to Patrick. He's got the answer. Patrick, not to say much, and excuse me for actually butting into conversation, but I've had that talk with many people here in Seattle, Washington. Nobody has actually, they think I'm crazy. They think that this is all hogwash. And why would why would, why would they work? want to look at it, they say, basically, when everything's going good in their lives, they are used to having that false sense of security, and as long as they have that, they're not going to listen. I they know. Need something, something drastic needs to happen for these people to come out of their sleep and do something 
And first of all, don't get me wrong, but anger and to the situation I'm in and hatred, hating the situation that I'm in is what got me here. And that's, yeah. I'm going to finish this even if it costs me my life. Yeah, what have we got? We haven't got anything to lose, okay? Nope. We've got everything to gain. That's the, that's the key thing in this whole process. We have everything to gain. We've already uh, basically lost everything. Mm-hmm. So, hey, to continue on, we might as well go for it because we haven't got anything unless we get out of it. And this is just like the movie World War Z, okay? All these zombies running around throughout the whole movie. And then basically the guy comes up, hey, we get a virus into ourselves, and basically the the zombies will walk right past us. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm giving you the virus by standing in admiralty, and they can't touch you. You come in as a prince of the land because that's what America stands for. That's what admiralty stands for, is prince. And you are then immune to them. Because okay. they're operating under total fraud. And like what I just said, basically all these laws that have been passed by the representatives and by the senators, 99% of them are void. Because the votes were cast by people that were in office passed while they were also an inhabitant. And they shall not be in office. They had to sit out one term, and they didn't. That was to keep the bankers from controlling the representatives and the senators. Hmm. It was done with a purpose. The founding fathers wrote that constitution with a purpose. You have to find out what the purpose of writing that constitution was. It was to protect the people. And to make a contract. From the corporations. Patrick, man, I have a question for you. Yeah. And I may, probably need some correction. If I need it, please be feel free to correct me. Okay. We're doing admiralty, but are we under UCC code two? No. Because, okay. No, because you're not under mind. any codes. You're not under the UCC. You do not do the UCC. You do not use codes. Yes, sir. I uh, okay. It was okay. actually yes. You just stand in admiralty, and basically you stand by right and wrong. Thank you. Okay. That that was my question. Is I because I had a discussion with a person today about so, some of the documentation uh, I was looking at, and he basically said, "Well, you're still talking about UCC code over here, but I'm saying it doesn't apply." And my my friend says, "Basically, you're doing a lot of documentation where you're touching on a lot of subjects, and so be careful on what how you do them." That was his advice to me. So basically, I just we had had a discussion on, on UCC and uh, Uniform Commercial Code, and I just I'm glad that you straightened me out. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Now there may be bits and pieces within the UCCs or within the code that they've tried to claim are theirs, but basically they're not. You will find those same statements out in the general 
uh, realm of the system. And in a lot of cases, you'll find them right out of the dictionary when you okay. understand the words. But also, didn't UCC and maritime law all get the ride from common law? So therefore, no. common law should stand? No, it came from Babylonian law. Okay. It never came from common law whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Only admiralty basically is pretty much along the lines of common law. Okay. Now they try and claim that maritime and uh, UCC law is the law of the land. It's not the law of the land. Because we're not under the United Nations. It's the law of the sea. Mm. Commercial sea, okay? Yes, sir. Which is all fraudulent. They can only operate in fraud. <clears throat> and that's what all these senators and uh, representatives have been doing. They've been operating in fraud, fraud of office. Mm. <clears throat> See, when you go into the law dictionaries, you're going to find uh, several items that are not that you would think should be addressed there in, uh, like, breach and fraudulent uh, items that are not being addressed. Why? Because, basically, that would expose them to the fraud that they're doing if they had those definitions in the law books mm. or in their law dictionaries you have to go to another dictionary and try and piece the words together. It's like a lot of people don't see that uh, uh, Lou code or Lou tax, L-I-E-U, tax, Tr transportation and communications. Well, the state is a transportation. They're transporting your cargo all over the damn place. And they're communicating it back and forth on the wires in the system for their bonds and everything. So they're a transportation and communication corporation. And that's what we're going to tax. We're taxing that usage with a whole bunch of different taxes. Not just one tax, but it's a conglomerate of taxes. Usage tax, harming tax, fraudulent tax. We can name any damn tax we want to. Just because that tax isn't addressed in the law dictionary doesn't mean that that can't be our tax in Admiralty. As our state tax, our free state tax, that we're putting against them for the usage and getting the benefits of our cargo. We haven't gotten the benefits of our own cargo. They're getting all the benefits. <laughs> About time we start standing up to these damn corporate governmental shitheads. The 
If they don't comply within the three-day time limit, then you can turn around and you could file something right into that chief judge. You can also take a B-10 and file a taxing harm claim against that U.S. attorney and against that U.S. trustee out at the bankruptcy court in D.C. You will get somebody's attention big time when you do that. Because, see, if the local people are all hanging together, you just took it away from the local people, and now you moved it out to the headquarters out in D.C. Mm-hmm. And basically you're going to get somebody's attention out there. Especially when they're violating the 13th Amendment and keeping you in a state of forced slavery for your fictional persons and depriving the true creditor of age a free state of their state assets or principality assets That's another word that's not in the law dictionary. It's principality. Why isn't it there? Because they don't want to know that you are a principality. Okay, any questions? What's there? Is somebody speaking? I was right in the back one. You use the the word assumpsit, and I am sure that has to do with our assets. I've I've heard the word non assumpsit, like no contract, but assumpsit and special assumpsit is that is that kind of directly tied to the assets or the cargo, right? Yeah, look up the definition of the word. Yeah, I am. I'm looking at it right now. I'll look at it some more. And those cases like Board of Highways Commissioners or something versus Bloomington or the other ones. Yeah, now a lot of people have a a, uh, deal about the 13th Amendment. Okay? I tried to explain this before. The original passing of that one uh, 13th Amendment back in 1812 that everybody says was for the title of nobility. Well, basically, the title of nobility for foreigners was already addressed in the Constitution. So why was this 13th Amendment that they were trying to pass? It was because the bankers back in uh, 1912, okay, were trying to pass this because they just lost the damn... Uh, first National Bank. This charter ran out in 1911 or 1811. Right. So they were trying to take the titles of nobility away from the people. Being a prince of the land of North America and of the United States of America. That was the title they were trying to take away. But nobody ever really knew that they had that title to begin with. The Supreme Court, if that did become passed, it was the Supreme Court that took it off the records. They were the only ones that could take it off the records. So somebody had to come in and file a case with the Supreme Court saying that this infringed upon our rights. At that point in time, the Supreme Court had to revoke that amendment. 
So that opened the door that there was no 13th Amendment. And then later on in 1938 or 1838 or whatever it was, when they passed the 13th Amendment with the slavery, okay, it did not affect the states that already had slavery in effect. It affected only new states that came into the Union. And the first state that came into the Union under the 13th Amendment was the state of Kansas. Kansas had to come in as a free state. That's why Kansas was called out in the movie Wizard of Oz. Because it had to be a free state. In other words, no maritime contracts in that state. But then they slowly slipped this in on the people because they the people didn't know that they could keep the congressmen and uh, senators from running for re-election every damn time that basically their terms seemed to be up because nobody read and understood the Constitution. And nobody ever pushed it into the Supreme Court. got one guy down here in this area that basically is writing a 60-page document to put into the court or put it into some place. I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, that's like half these other people that have written 100-page documents. If you can't say what you need to say in two or three pages, that document ain't going to be read and it ain't worth a shit. <laughs> I mean, basically, it just stands as fact. I don't have time to read the whole damn novel. I'll read the foreword and basically the the final chapter, maybe, in a book. And I'll know what the hell that book was all about. Because basically, most all these damn things are the same damn scenario, just rewritten over and over again, and somebody else's words in between that have screwed it all up. (laughs) Trying to show that they might know something that they really don't know something. Not that I know everything. I only think, sit down and think about these things in a more logical scenario. You take the time and you will start doing, being able to do that. Sleep on it. Think about it. Dream about it. Then go and get a dream catcher from one of the Lakota Nations, Indian tribes or something like that, and catch your dreams so you remember them in the morning. Those dream catchers do work. Excuse me, Mr. Patrick? Yeah. I uh, just wanted to bring up if we were at the 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 real reason what gets them in trouble is I think because when they did it's in the law and the statutes uh, that basically if they debase the economic value 
of the currency of the United States of America that can be charged not only with treason, but it's on the only offense that is punishable by a capital punishment, which is the death penalty, the debasing of the currency of the United States of America, which is silver and gold. Yeah, but they, you, you can't argue that, okay? Okay. See, you're arguing something that has no basis of what you want to get done. You get your assets, okay, by bankruptcy, off your vessels. Now, as a prince of the land, you deposit that back into the United States Treasury. You are the only one in the country that can, as a prince of the land of, and basically in your free state, you are the only state that can basically go and have the treasury coin money. You, the people, but you have to become a free state to be able to do this. They will go and take your asset value and coin the money, put it in a circulation. That is lawful money now. It can't come out of circulation. The Federal Reserve money can only stay in circulation for three years. It's debt money. And see, this is the way you take the bankers completely out of the system. If we get enough people to put the currency our currency into circulation, what do we need the bankers for? No. They can't take it out of circulation, so they can't cause inflation and deflation by pulling in the monetary currency, depriving the people of monetary exchangement any longer. You just killed the bank, the bankers. See, that's what some of these people never fully understood. Andrew Jackson didn't fully understand this, that the people, we the people, have the power to order the treasury to mint the money. The, the state of Iowa, the state of South Carolina, they can't order the Treasury to mint money, and they can't mint their own money. Okay. We're not minting our own money, but we are ordering the Treasury to take our asset and mint it into money, to currency of exchange. Asset backed. Which is a certificate of lab boom. Okay. And see, that's what the bankers do not want us out of the system. Because we do that and basically we can destroy the banks. I might be crazy, Mr. Patrick, the... But I wish you would actually make a courtroom movie about this whole situation. If you explained everything out there and put it on film, believe me, you'd have a lot of people following you in your steps. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, basically, there's been movies out there that have tried to explain some of this stuff to people, and uh, they just watch it for entertainment. So unless it's, my movie's a good entertainment movie, basically, they ain't going to watch it anyway. Unfortunately. Yeah. But you got something here, Miss Mr. Patrick. I mean it's just like I was watching one movie today, uh, Pure Country, uh, The Gift, number two, and basically uh the directors later on were saying that basically if they uh had that strictly as a musical, uh the people wouldn't have watched it. It had mm -hmm. to have a 
story in the movie so that the people would watch it as a movie. Otherwise, they, if they wanted to go hear a co- concert, they'd go to a concert. They're not going to buy a uh, DVD to watch a concert. What was the movie? Pure Country, The Gift 2. Oh, okay, thank you. George Strait, and then basically this girl was the singer in there. She gets the gift of uh, being able to sing, okay. having the voice to sing. Thank you. I really like that your explanation of that we have the power to order the meaning of the money and it's, and the implications of that. Now, see, the prince, as a prince, you have the power, just like in uh, uh, Eddie Murphy coming to America, uh, the movie Coming to America. He had his own money. Well, here, and see, that movie was trying to tell us, as a prince, you can order up your own money. But it's all going to be under the United States seal. It's going to be debt-free money. You're not going to have your picture on the damn dollar bill, like Eddie Murphy did. But when you sit down and start thinking about this, how many different movies do all these damn things relate to? I mean, you've got a little hard drive there that has a lot of these movies on your hard disk. Start pulling them to the front. Start thinking back about things that you've done in your past lifetime. Why did you do things at certain points in time? Because you had a slightly different understanding at that point in time, and basically you've forgotten some of that stuff. Okay, any questions? Try and get those B10s in. Look over those that latest facts that I put, had Tom post up there. Utilize some of this stuff. You're the one that has the power. Start utilizing that power. They're all operating in fraud. I have a question. It's a really a minor question, and I know the answer is probably it doesn't make any difference. Uh, go to school with what I have. But my U.S. attorney is in Toledo, and the U.S. trustee is in Cleveland. I just send them to where they, where they are. It doesn't have to be in the same city, right? I would send her to the one bankruptcy where the trustee is going to be located. Oh, okay. That'd be Cleveland then. Yeah, you should have. I mean, if there's a bankruptcy court in one of the other places, there should be a uh, trustee there. Well, I would go to the one to where the trustee's at. And the U.S. Attorney's Office is also located there, too. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I looked up there. There's a... uh, um, trustees' offices in, in three cities, but not not the fourth city. Mr. Patrick, please bear with me, but I want to get everything done and put it into uh, the court. But I actually, at this point, I'm dead broke. 
I'm sitting in a bad situation, so I can only do very little, but I'd love to get back and tell you, hey, this is done and it's working. What well, I'll do what done, I can right? as I, keep, I go along with this. What well, if there's done, somebody right? out there that might be able to help you, uh, put a call mm-hmm. out and ask them if they could help, okay? Yeah. yeah. We'll get it done, right? Yeah, because I want to get this done. I, I'm, like I said, I'm in a bad situation, and it's only getting worse. So finishing this, I don't care if it's a million dollars or two million or pennies. It's just getting out of the system, having what I what's mine, and being able to live a life of decency. I'm just over all this abuse, use and abuse. Yeah. And basically, like I said, that 13th Amendment comes big into this process altogether. I'll be okay. I'll be using it. Yeah. I'll, I'll and, be holding uh, that again. And if you can, uh, walk the thing right into the bankruptcy court. Take two copies in, signed copies. You give one to them, the B10, and you get one time stamp for your records. Yeah, I remember that from the last call we actually had that you had actually stated that. I kept that in my yeah. mind very well. Okay. And I will do that. Ray has a problem with the guards. They won't let him in, though. It's because I don't have any other ID than another world passport and doesn't come in up and comes in up. Well, and don't use case. that world passport, okay? <laughs> if, okay. Nothing else, if nothing else, you make up your own identification card or you go down to the sheriff's office and you get a private set of fingerprints and identification without a social security number okay that's what I said about four or five years ago I went into the sheriff's office and basically I got a blue card set of fingerprints, and then they also printed out an identification card, and it does not have a Social Security number or any other. It has their number for the machine, but no other identification, no driver's license, no Social Security number, anything on that document. Nothing's attached. Okay. I will do what I can with as limited as I am. Yeah, there's ways to get these identifications. And see, you're coming in an admiralty, so you have a right to that uh, private identification. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because last time... I was recognized as a sovereign nation when I went in there, and it actually created a lot of problems. Yeah, you are not a sovereign nation. You are part of the sovereignty. The North American continent is the sovereign. You are part of the nation, so you are a sovereignty of the nation or of the continent. Mm-hmm. You are a principality. Mm-hmm. And see, that is not a sovereignty. That is a, or that is not a sovereign. That is a sovereignty. Okay. Prince. And see, that's what the patriots out here, they don't understand the difference between sovereignty and sovereign. They don't understand a lot of words. Well, look how long the government's trying to keep people stupid. Yeah, well, there's been too damn many infiltrators out here in the Patriot community, and then the people are following these infiltrators that are all working for the bankers. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I find that every day. I okay, anybody else people. got questions? No. 
Okay, so I've told you how to get an identification card. And I've used that before. That blue card as okay. my identification. It's, and basically, if you get the one that has uh, the picture on it, basically it's got a picture. That's what, in a lot of cases, they only use. Now, banks, normally they have a hard line deal that they want a driver's license because they want you in the system. The post office will accept that identification. The court register recorder's office has accepted my uh, sheriff's uh, blue card. Several other governmental agencies I think I even used it one time when I went up to the federal courthouse. Okay. <sighs> but see, you don't go in there and argue with them, okay? If you're running a problem with them, just turn around and walk away. There's other means to turn around and come back after them later. That's exactly what I've had to do. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to turn around and try and mail it in if you can. Well, I would love to get the satisfaction of actually having them stamp the documents. Right. Hey, Patrick, um, what does that mean on the B-10 form, the last four digits of any number by which creditor identifies debtor? Social Security, last four. That Primarily, it? yeah, the Social Security number, or if you don't have, if they don't have a Social Security number, you try and get their EIN number. If they don't have an EIN number, you use the last four digits of their uh, zip code, mm. their nine-digit zip code. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I that, that yeah. four digits on that zip right. code yeah, is the their answer. address. Right, right. Okay, that's Okay, it says any four digit number. Right. Hmm. See? People didn't read that. that, did you, Tom? No, I missed that. Well that you answered it good, I understand now. That's four digits of any number. That you identify the debtor. By which the creditor identifies debtor, right. Yeah. And see, even, even if you don't have the EIN number or anything for the U.S. attorney, if you've got their uh, nine-digit zip code number, you use their four digits because that's the office number. Right. And you're putting a claim in against the, the bonds of office, not against the individual. You take out their bonds of office, and basically that individual will no longer have a bond to protect him by. The insurance company will say, hey, we ain't going to support you any longer. You better go find another job. Okay, so we're really undermining them then when we're going after their bond. You're going after the office bond. Uh, okay, the insurance policy. You're going after the insurance policy. You take out the insurance policy, and basically they can't operate any longer in maritime system. They're dead in the water until they get a new insurance policy, which in most cases, unless they're a real good uh, party member, the insurance company ain't going to give them a new contract until that person is removed from office. Then the next person that gets in office, they will assign a new contract.
See, there's ways to control these people. You just don't know how they are. Well, I apologize, Mr. Patrick. I don't know it all. Well, no, I'm not ha- ha- harping on you. I'm harping on the other people that basically think that they know it all out here, and they tr- keep trying to go against the people themselves. No, you go after the fiction, the office. You take out the office, and basically the person can't be in that office any longer. Mm. He has to go out and get a real job. If you consider anybody who's ever had a law degree a real job. (laughs) You're probably about the only straight-up lawyer there is outside of everybody else. We got plenty... One example, who's sitting in jail? They all do a good job, but at the end of the top run, some of them are in jail. You're not. Yeah, basically that's where they're going to be if this all plays out. They made the people's lives miserable. It's about time we turn around and make their lives miserable as hell. Mm Mm-hmm. They've destroyed more families in this country than you can shake a stick at. Not to say much about that. Uh, I actually feel that, in my personal opinion, you're right on that. And uh, they, the government actually in Santa Fe, New Mexico, actually helped destroy my family. What was left of it? Yeah, they were out here to destroy the family farms. Uh, the family structure, everything. They don't want a wedding, a husband and wife living in harmony. Mm-hmm. They want total disharmony. They want chaos. And yet they claim that we're the ones that are going to cause chaos. No, they're the ones that are causing all the chaos. I wish we could get everybody on this call to file at the same time and get more to file. Maybe that that way they'd learn something. It would have helped if, uh, yeah, if people would have followed along and kept on to this, but too many people got sidetracked and they didn't see that we were getting results, even though we were getting results. When we got things back from the courts, basically they were saying We don't have jurisdiction. They were telling us a lot of stuff. Just like the one uh, United States Court of Claims sent back to this one guy and said, hey, you're still out at sea. You need to bring your vessel into port. In other words, you need to bankrupt him. Break the Run him aground. Bring the birth certificate, break the ship. And then all the other subcontracts have to come in to support the mothership. How many times have you seen in the movies to where a ship gets hung up on a sandbar or something like that, and they put all the boats with oars in the water to try and pull the ship off the sandbar? Many times. Yeah. But all those little boats belong to that mothership. They have to come back to her. And see, that's what your driver's license, that's what all these other items, they derive their existence from the mothership, that certificate of live birth registration vessel. And they have to come home to her. Or for a female, to the father vessel. Oh, God. A 
Okay, any other questions? Uh, no. Okay. Call the night, Tom. Hey, thank, thank you, so Patrick. Much. Patrick, we'll okay. get this in. Thank you, thank guys, you for all the support, okay? Okay. Thank you, Patrick, for taking the okay. time to educate me. Okay, you guys take care. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good Bye. night.